Uh, so welcome today to the seminar. It's early in the morning a little today, but uh, our speaker is, uh, is is giving his talk in the in his previous day actually. It's still February two, and and very late in the night for him. Uh, speaker is Hong Liu, who is very well known. He needs no introduction, and he's going to talk about his very recent work on understanding how time emerges in holography through operator algebra and the boundary. So uh, over to you, Hong. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot for the uh, for the invitation. Um, yeah. So this is uh, some recent work which uh, did with um, my student Sam Luther sir, and which appeared in these two papers. There's one short version, and there's a, a much longer paper. Um, so. Whenever we talk about uh, quantum gravity, one of the first issue which arises is the problem of quantum uh, uh, is the problem of time. So, uh, uh, in quantum mechanics, time is an absolute concept. So um, yeah, because that's the uh, we need to use time to define evolution. But in gravity, most of the time. Actually, time is meaningless, as time can be changed by arbitrary uh, gauge diffeomorphism transformations. Say, if you make a time requires transition, and then uh, yeah, you can just change it arbitrary way. Here, I say most of the time, because in some situation, uh, 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 absolute time can actually be defined in quantum gravity. So this is the case of ADS. Okay. So in ADS, there is an absolute asymptotic time. The reason is that when we define, say, gauge diffeomorphisms, uh, uh, diffeomorphism as gauge transformations, they, they should go to zero at infinity. So they should uh, approach identity at infinity. And so if your uh, boundary is time-like, and then that time, then will not be changed by any gauge transformations. Then that time is actually gauge invariant, and then then have an absolute meaning. Of course, this aspect it was underlies the uh, success of ADSFT. Uh, without this uh, asymptotic time, then of course we cannot. Uh, yeah, we just don't have ADSFT. And so this is also the reason why quantum gravity in other space uh, in space times of other asymptotics they appear much more difficult. Okay, because there. There's no such kind of symptotic time, which we can use to define a quantum mechanics. So, but in, in ADSFT, even though there's a symptotic time, there's a natural question is whether this asymptotic time can be sensibly extended to the interior, say in the way which is gauge environment, say uh, does not, dip, yeah, diffeomorphism environment. So, uh, and this question um, can be separated into several layers. Say, if you consider for the box space time, if it's time translation environment, say if you have a global time like Killing vector, then the answer is yes, because in this case, uh, the spatial slice, uh, in the sense the uh, uh, um, static spatial slice is preferred. And then there's a meaningful way you can extend time into the interior. But if you have a general time dependent space time, then, then, then it's not clear how we can actually extend uh, the symptotic time to the interior. So a very interesting intermediate case between the two, between this simple uh, global killing vector case and the general time dependent case is the situation uh, of the internal black hole. So internal black hole as it's well known that Say if you have an internal black hole in ADS, then then this is described by two copies uh, of CFT boundary CFT in the thermal field double state. Okay, in the entangled thermal field double state, there's no interaction between the two CFT, but they're entangled. Okay. Um, so in this case, the situation is more interesting. So in this case, there's a time like a killing vector outside the horizon. Okay, so if you look at the these two L and R region, uh, um, so there's a, a, a time like K 
killing vector, and this time coincide with your symptotic time. So, so we can just yeah because of this uh, 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 because of this time like killing vector, we can actually extend the notion of the boundary time into this R and L regions. Okay, but but this time stops at the event horizon. And uh, um, and if you look at the whole space time, there's not a global killing vector because this time uh, in our region become actually space-like uh, when you go to future and the past regions. Okay, and uh, and in the future and the past regions, there's no killing a uh, time-like killing vector. So so this example, in the sense, it's an intermediate between the two extreme cases I mentioned earlier. So here there is a, 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 a time uh, a, like the killing vector, but it's only in the sub region. Okay, it's not for the full space time. And so using standard ADSFT, then it's straightforward to describe the region outside the horizon uh, uh, using our standard formulation. Okay. But then of course there are many mysteries even after say the discovery of this duality after 20 years, uh, uh, many mysteries remain. For example, um, how do we describe the future and the past regions using the boundary theory? And how do we describe the Kruska time like evolution? Okay. Um, also, how do we see from the boundary theory uh, horizons and associated causal structure? And also, say, say, even though from the boundary theory point of view, this CFTL and the CFTR, they don't interact with each other, but from the back, we can have observers fall into the black hole. Actually, they can interact in the future region. Okay, so, so how, do, how do we understand such uh, uh, interactions from the boundary theory? So, so related to these questions, we can also uh, uh, think about how do we use the boundary, say, evolution to describe the Bach evolution. So, so there's obvious way uh, uh, we can say describe the Bach evolution is to use the this so-called HR. Yeah, suppose the uh, the H is the Hamiltonian in the boundary series. So here we have two Hamiltonian HR and HL. So if we consider so HR minus HL. So such a combination is distinguished because such a combination actually uh, uh, leave uh, uh, annihilates uh, the sum of your double states. Okay, so so sum of your double state is invariant under the evolution uh, generated by this uh, 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 operator. And so this is reflected on the bar, in the bark point of view that this operator actually uh, in the bark actually generates isometry. Okay. And if you start with the, this t equal to zero Cauchy slice, and then we'll move to this uh, uh, Cauchy slice. And, but no matter how you evolve, uh, 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 you always uh, uh, only restrict to the regions outside the horizon. You, uh, uh, using this time evolution, you cannot uh, 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 probe anything inside the horizon. And similarly, you can consider HR plus HL. And then if you look at how Cauchy slice in the bark, uh, evolve on the HR plus HL, then, then this is no longer isometry. But still, this cannot probe the region inside the horizon because it just uh, moved uh, uh, this bark Cauchy slice uh, 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 this way. So when you take the T goes to infinity, and then we we'll just approach this uh, to uh, future horizon. So now if we want to understand all these mysteries, uh, I mentioned in the previous slide, if we want to probe the region outside, uh, inside the horizon, and if we want to probe the causal structure due to the horizon, if we want to probe the existence of the horizon, then we have to be able to be able to describe the time evolution like this. Okay, so you uh, you start with t equal to zero Cauchy slice, you should be able to, you want to evolve to some other Cauchy slice. Which actually can enter uh, uh, the uh, 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 interior of the black hole. Yeah, uh, uh, for example, the standard the Kruska time is like this. So here I just draw some arbitrary time slice. Okay. 
And then since that the standard boundary evolution, they cannot generate evolutions inside the horizon. So, so it's very natural to expect a, a, a such kind of evolution has to be emergent. Okay, uh, just not straightforwardly from the uh, standard boundary evolution. So, so goal of this, uh, uh, the goals of this uh, uh, talk is try to address the mysteries I mentioned earlier in the previous slides, and to describe how you achieve this last uh, uh, a plot kind of evolution, this kind of evolution which uh, uh, can cross the horizon. Okay. And how do we describe that in the diffeomorphism environment way? Okay. Uh, uh, um, uh, can, uh, I, can I ask something here? Uh, is, yeah. Can the question be posed without requiring the second side, the, uh, like two CFTs? Uh, 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 sorry, say it again. Uh, can the question be posed without requiring two sides? Oh, yeah, yeah, you can pose the question without two sides. Yeah, yeah, just two sides is a little bit easier. Yeah, you can, can yeah, you can try to think about the one side black hole. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so so similar issues exist there. And uh, yeah, so one side black hole's story is a little bit more complicated. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, just two side case. Uh, two sides case is already a highly non trivial. Yes, um, like, uh, 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 highly non-trivial and interesting example, and uh, and it's a little bit easier than the one side case. Okay, okay. So maybe I ask more about it later. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so our goal is to try to address the mystery mentioned in the previous slides, and in particular, I will give a, a give you a explicit boundary constructions, say of this kruska like uh, evolutions. Okay. And also, uh, uh, we will, yeah, we will be able to describe the boundary emergence of the horizon and associated causal structure. So yeah, so here is a rough plan which I'm going to uh, uh, do in this talk. So first, I will uh, outline the main results. Okay, so what we can actually achieve, and then I will review a little bit, say, the entanglement structure. Say in uh, 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 in general relativistic quantum field series, and in particular the importance of this so-called type three one volume algebra in understanding the uh, uh, such uh, uh, entanglement structure, and then associated with this type three one volume uh, uh, algebra uh, is a very important uh, result called half-sided uh, uh, module inclusions and translations, and then this will be uh, uh, the main tool we use. To, act, to actually construct this emerging time uh, from the boundary theory. So, 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 so then I will talk about how, how you can construct uh, this kind of cross-cut time uh, evolutions from the boundary. And then finally, I will uh, 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 have some discussions. So before I, I, I proceed, do you have any other questions? Yeah, I have just a probably very silly question. So as you initially said, there was this possibility of something falling inside the black hole and interacting. It cannot be detected from outside. So uh, how, why do you think that should emerge, that description should emerge from the, from the two CFTs because they are causally disconnected? I mean, this event is causally disconnected from that. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, uh, so that's why that feature has to be emergent. Yeah, so if you can describe this kind of evolution, hmm. if you can describe this kind of evolution, and, uh, okay, and, that they, uh, and then they collide inside the black hole, then become trivial. Uh, uh, because if you can describe this kind of evolution, then certainly they can be inside the black hole. So there is some kind of emergent computation you could do to understand what would have happened if they interact, what will happen. Yeah, yeah, if you can, yeah. If you can describe this kind of evolution, this kind of evolution just includes uh, uh, that you can have operator, uh, you can have object fall through the uh, uh, fall through the horizon that meets, uh, uh, say, meet as on future slides. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So so it's encoded in this kind of structure. Yeah. If you can uh, uh, describe cross cut time evolution and then and then uh, 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 then that should be uh, automatically included in that framework, even though yes. to describe even though to describe such kind of explicit interaction. Uh, technically, 
uh, 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 may be involved, but at least conceptually is no longer an issue. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Good. Okay. Um, Hong, maybe uh, I can yeah. ask uh, just one more question. So, um, so the, using this uh, emergent time of yours, uh, it, aren't you saying that this, uh, you know, reconstruction of the interior of the horizon uh, should automatically follow from this? Because if you have a crystal like evolution, um, then and we are at a future time slice, then um, we are trying to reconstruct the interior. Uh, so we just uh, back evolve in principle. Uh, and then we come to t equal to zero, uh, where we know everything. Uh, so that amounts to uh, reconstruction of the interior of the black. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, you don't even have to back involve. Or we can just take an operator, say, yeah. say somewhere outside the horizon, we are, as I will show you, and then we can just evolve it, uh, uh, just do some kind of evolution, and then that can just take you inside the horizon big because of the uh, uh, big, because we can take you uh, uh, into some other slides which cross the horizon. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in the past, in the past, people can do operator reconstruction inside the horizon, but that always require you use some bark information. So you either have to use bark equation motion, or you have to use the analytic structure at the horizon, et cetera. You have to use those bark e information to do the operator uh, uh, reconstruction uh, 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 in the interior region. But here uh, I have, a, uh, I will have an intrinsic boundary formulation. I just take an operator uh, say outside the horizon, and then I just evolve it, and then that just can take you inside the horizon and give you a sharp. And when you cross the horizon, there's a sharp signature. That's great. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, that's what I'm going to describe. Uh, 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 describe in the first part. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. So let me just first outline the main result, including the question which uh, uh, Gautam just just asked. So, so I will show, okay, to, to describe important of I will show there exist evolution operators. Actually, there's an infinite number of such evolution operators. Okay, uh, 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 I will just give you uh, 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 some examples. Okay, uh, so in principle, you can construct uh, construct infinite number of them. So, so, so we show that there exist evolution operators on the boundary. So this G is some Hermitian, and then you can just exponentiate this G to construct some unitary operator, okay? And, so, and then we, uh, and this G have the following properties, okay? So first that the G involve both CFTR and the CFT, right, uh, uh, CFT left degrees freedom. By, by say this involve both right and left degrees freedom, we don't mean just you trivially Add hr plus hl, uh, 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 that kind of, yeah, just direct sum. Uh, uh, here, actually, uh, 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 this g involves both r and uh, uh, l degrees freedom in somewhat non trivial way. Okay. And then another important feature of this g is that its spectrum is bounded from below. Okay. So this is a key feature. So that's why. We want to call this S. We want to call this uh, 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 evolution. We want to call this uh, uh, a unitary operator generated by G. We want to call it a time evolution. Because as we know, in quantum mechanics, how do we describe space and time? So the way we describe, uh, uh, yeah, if, you, uh, if I give you a unitary evolution, so how do, you uh, uh, how do you tell whether this is a time evolution or it's a spatial translation? Okay. And the way we tell them is from the spectrum of the generators. So if you have a, a spatial translation and then the momentum operator is unbounded for uh, both above and below, okay? Uh, momentum go, can go from minus infinity to plus infinity. But if it's a, a generated time evolution, 
then your Hamiltonian inspection will Hamiltonian have to be bounded from below. Otherwise, uh, 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 you, uh, you, uh, uh, this is not a sensible. Yeah, you have instability. This is not a sensible quantum mechanical system. Okay, so so this property is crucial. Okay, uh, because of this property, we call this is a time. Okay, we call this S a a, a, a new time. Okay, and in particular, we can take an operator. Okay, so so this uh, this x is a location, yeah. I say it, 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 it's a point in the in the region uh, outside the horizon. Say for example in this R region of the black hole. And now we construct this intrinsically boundary operator, okay. And now we can act this operator on this Bach operator outside the horizon, okay. We can look at the evolution of this operator. And then we can show that it can actually take it inside horizon for sufficiently large S. Okay. And in particular, during this evolution, there's a sharp signature when we cross the horizon. Okay. And also using this evolution, we can essentially generate uh, these future and the past regions uh, uh, by starting from the right and air regions. Okay. So, uh, um, so let me. Uh, sorry, Hong. So the, this phi of x is a is a boundary construction. Um, I mean, is it like an h h k l kind of uh, operator or? Uh, right, what? right, right. Yeah, yeah. Because because the for the for the um for the um for the for any operator outside the horizon, you can just use the standard ADSFT dictionary. Write down its mode expansion. And this mode expansion essentially you can treat the mode, uh, uh, treat the operator uh, creation and annihilation operator as boundary operators. Yeah, yeah. Essentially, this uh, any bulk operator on the uh, uh, on the uh, 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 outside horizon uh, uh, can be uh, can be automatically thought as a boundary operator. It just used in the standard dictionary. Yeah, yeah. HKL, etc. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good. Good and and then and then this will be a uh, informing time, okay. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. If you just look at the first two feature, uh, it, you just know this is some kind of time, but uh, but then we can show this can take you inside the horizon and then that makes it to be a a a, a, a informing time. Yeah, cross cut like time. Yeah. Okay. Good. So so uh, uh, for BTZ, say for two plus one dimensional uh, ADS black hole, you can actually do this very explicitly. Uh, 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 we can construct this kind of transformation very explicitly for some examples. And uh, uh, can so, I ask some some quick question here uh, yeah. if, about this? Uh, what is the support of this uh, flowed operator at the boundary? Sorry, support of what operator? Of the flowed operator. This oh, uh, oh. x. Yeah. So. Five, uh, yeah, so this will have some. Uh, uh, um, yeah, this. Yeah, this have some support. Yeah, so. So this is actually a. a, a yeah, there's something actually was not quite known before. We actually had to work out ourselves. So so if you look at HKL story, okay. So if you write in the black hole geometry, if you write say this capital X outside the black hole. Uh, outside the horizon. And then you cannot actually express this in terms of the position operators on the boundary. Okay, because the because uh, uh, that's kernel is divergent. Uh, so that's a well-known story. Uh, uh, that kernel is divergent. So so in the standard HKL story, you can actually not talk about the support of this phi x on the boundary. Uh, 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 but you can write it in terms of the momentum operator on the boundary. And, uh, and then uh, 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 so you can write this phi x in the convergent way in terms of the momentum operator on the boundary, but not in terms of coordinate space operator. And when you write them in terms of momentum space operator, then the naively that actually covers full boundary space time. Okay, there's no, uh, uh, it, it's actually supported on the full boundary space time. But actually, uh, 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 we found recently actually it's, uh, uh, it's not true. You can actually uh, refine the statement. It's actually uh, located actually only in the space-like region connected to this uh, uh, to this X, yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's a lot of story, uh, 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 a separate story, uh, uh, yeah. And then similarly for this capital phi, yeah. Uh, 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 we have a detailed discussion in our paper, but uh, but the, uh, in our long paper, but this is a more like a technical aspect. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, in this talk, I will not go into that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, I was just saying that in the standard reconstruction story, we have this entanglement wedge and its uh, and its boundary uh, yeah. region corresponding, and uh, so that's where the things are usually supported. But here, there is uh, you are saying that it's it, it, it is it, it is a property of the full space time algebra. Right. Okay. No, no, no. Here, the entanglement wedge is the full space time, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I understand that. Okay. Yes. If you look at the Penrose diagram, mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, the any point outside the horizon is the entanglement wedge of the full yeah. space time. Yeah. But actually, uh, uh, but actually, uh, as I mentioned, you can uh, uh, make a stronger statement uh, that if mm -hmm. you have a point here, the back point mm -hmm. here, and then it's only supported within the night con within the space-like connected region uh, uh, to this point. And so this is a new result we prove in our paper. Yeah. All right, so you would expect something like that. The support should yeah. not exist. Okay. That's right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, sorry, just one thing, uh, just to make sure. So even in usual ADS, uh, sorry, usual HKLL, uh, the, with the boundary time, if I want to reconstruct some operator inside the horizon, it has support. It has to have support from both the left operator and right operators. Yeah. Uh, but but I guess again, uh, your uh, uh, point will be that uh, to reconstruct those operators, I have I cannot do it fully in position space uh, because of these divergence issues. Uh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, but also as I mentioned earlier, if you use HKL, even if you can write that operator inside the horizon in terms of both left and the right way, that construction you have to ask, you have to use the bulk input. You have to either use analytic properties of the horizon or you have to use the uh, 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 the equation motion in the bulk. That's right, yeah. Yeah, uh, it, 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 so, so in that sense, even though you can write down, uh, uh, but it's not intrinsic a boundary construction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but so it doesn't give that... you an intrinsic boundary construction. So, okay, um, I also have one quick question. So, but uh, if, if, doesn't the HKL construction itself require a solution of the bulk wave equation? Sorry. The, doesn't the HKL construction itself require a solution of the bulk wave equation anyway? No. Yeah. So. So when you write this operator, yeah, uh, 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 let me just be, uh, 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 be clear about one point. So if you have a point, say, say if you have a point here, uh, 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 if you want to ex uh, express in terms of the boundary operator, you do, yeah, of course you use the Bach equation motion, uh, uh, but this is a Bach equation motion outside the horizon, which we, we know how to treat, et cetera. Yeah, just this is the standard ADSFT dictionary. It's not part of the mystery, okay? But now if you want to describe the region here, and then, then the only way you can do the region here using the traditional approach is you have to evolve in this direction. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. But I was saying that like, uh, if you use the left and the right, on the other hand, you get both sorts of modes from uh, the, the left and the right, and then you can, can't you just go into the, uh, in, into the interior? That was my question. So if you are using yeah. both left and right, no, I mean, if you're using no, only you one use, side, I understand. But I no, 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 no. If you use both and the left and the right, if you use both left and the right, again, you have to use the Kruska time evolution to go there. You have to put in the Kruska uh, evolution by hand. Right. To, yeah. to go there. But, you're, you're, but the you're basically the, saying that you need to have this wave equation in the Kruskal coordinates in order to get past the horizon. That's, I think, what you're saying, right? And not exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So when I do the bulk reconstruction outside the horizon, I can just use the standard ADS dictionary and use the uh, use the uh, extension of the boundary time to do that. So in that sense, I'm not using uh, I'm not using the input of uh, uh, this emerging time, yeah. So that time I already know how to use. Yeah, thanks. I understood. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, good. Okay. Good. So, um, so, so in BTZ, you can uh, uh, do everything explicitly, and then, then, then let's just look at this evolution. And then it turns out that they, yeah, let's just take S, start from S equal to zero and start evolving it. So um, it turns out that then this exists a finite value S zero greater than zero. 
for s smaller than zero, this yeah. So uh, so originally because this point is in the right region, so the phi x will be known to the CFTR. Okay. So now you see if you evolve by a finite amount, this orbit is still uh, within the right CFT. But then suddenly, at this critical value of s zero, when you cross it, and now actually uh, uh, the left degree uh, 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 the left degree freedom emerges. Uh, 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 from this evolution. Okay, this, this evolution I can construct explicitly. Uh, and, and then you just find out, uh, uh, I can construct U explicitly and if you just work this out and then you find for S smaller than S zero, uh, it only contain R degrees freedom, but when, uh, when you cross a critical value, in, uh, uh, they include both R and L. And so this is precisely you expect when you cross the horizon, okay? Because when you're outside the horizon, and then of course uh, you can fully be described by the right CFT. But once you cross the horizon, now you are closely connect with the left CFT, then in order to describe any point in the future region, you have to involve both right and left degrees freedom. Okay. And so this gives you a sharp signature of a horizon. Okay. So, so the, the fact that there exists a sharp S0 means that the, uh, uh, there's a sharp horizon. Uh, so, so uh, can I can I ask a question about this PTZ? Uh, yeah. So maybe this is sorry. This is probably uh, something that uh, one can ask uh, later, but I'm not sure if we would mention it. So usually there is this thing that if you have if you need a portion of the interior can also be uh, reconstructed from say a portion at the boundary, uh, but then that uh, in that case it will be a kind of a state dependent. Uh, there will be state dependence dependence on the subspace that you are. Subspace dependent. So now, if you if you can also pose the same question about the interior time, the time some time evolution in the interior in this uh, in, in from the point of view of the subalgebra of, the, of this. So does this story go through? Like you you would, would you be able to have some description within that uh, sub within that subalgebra about uh, this uh, uh, in infalling observer, or you need the full space time to see the infalling observer? So this is actually uh, what I was. Sorry, uh, you were talking about the, not for the black hole, just for the general case entanglement of wedge. Uh, it, well, it includes the BTC case also because this is a one in BTC. There is there's explicit examples where you could have this uh, uh, like uh, a subregion of the boundary that can encode a part of the interior. Right, right, right. Yeah, and uh, then yeah, yeah, and then yeah, the question uh, is whether whether you can describe the infalling observer within that uh, subalgebra within um, the state dependent uh, construction. Yeah, that's, um, I think the construction can in principle be extended to to uh, to that, but but there the story will be different because the uh, if you look at the sub region, then depend, yeah, it depends on how you precisely formulate the story. I think in principle you might, yeah. Yeah, you have to, yeah, I think that's a more com more complex question, uh, which I think the techniques here can, in principle, be, uh, be applied. Uh, but I think it's a question you have to, yeah, uh, uh, have to be carefully formulated first. Yeah, yeah, we uh, uh, we haven't uh, 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 done that yet. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Good. So, so actually, this is a somewhat more general. Con Let me just mention by passing. This is not the, uh, 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 important for what we are going to discuss later. Uh, uh, let me mention by passing just this feature. Uh, in principle, I have nothing to do with the black hole. Uh, here, I'm just talking about two CFT. And then I look at some operator, say first in the right CFT. But then I can construct an operator, a evolution operator, and then this phenomenon happen. Okay, and then then for general theory, uh, for any two quantum system, in principle, such a kind of phenomenon can happen. And if such phenomena happen, then we will say these two series actually are causally connectable. In the sense, even though these series are tensor product of each other, but actually there's some way uh, you may say there's an emergent uh, a connectivity between this uh, a causal a causal connectivity between these two series. And for example, uh, uh, this kind of concept may be may be able to be used to say to to verify gravity in the lab. Say if you take two s y k, 
and then uh, and then if you demonstrate something like this exists, then you may say, oh, uh, this is a sharp signature for for dual horizon. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, so this is a side comment. So so now let me just say a little bit more about this S zero. Okay, uh, 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 we construct this U S explicitly, then you can find out what's the value of this S zero. So it turns out that this value of S zero. Yeah, now let me just use the Kruska diagram uh, 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 just for simplicity. Uh, 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 let me neglect the uh, horizon uh, or neglect the uh, boundary and the singularity here. Just look at this Kruska plane. And then, then, then this, the back lines are, are, are horizon and then you have a point in the right region. And then, so we just evolve this operator. It turns out for this, op if, it, if your initial point have Kruska now coordinate at U0 and the V0, okay? It turns out that this S0 is precisely given by the minus U0. So it's precisely the null distance. You approach the horizon, uh, you cross the horizon uh, 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 along this null now, uh, now U direction. Okay. Uh, it, 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 you can also, yeah, uh, 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 as I mentioned, there's an infinite number of such U you can construct. Uh, and so this is just one example. You can also construct the U so that you can go uh, move in the V direction, uh, uh, as I'm going to mention later. Okay. Anyway, so for this particular U, which I'm talking about now, which is particularly simple to construct, it turns out this S0 is equal to minus U0. It's just precisely the Kruska uh, 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 time shift uh, to take you across the horizon. So in particular, if this initial point is actually close to the horizon, and then turns out that this transformation is actually a local transformation. It just corresponding to a Kruska law, law translation. It, it just translates by, by distance, uh, by, by coordinate distance S uh, for the Kruska coordinates. Okay, so here the Kruska coordinate is completely emergent. I, uh, I don't put in by hand, okay? Uh, uh, I just start with a boundary point. Uh, I start uh, uh, with a point at the outside horizon and then, then this Kruskal value just emerges from this uh, 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 evolution operator. And but if you, so so for the point near the horizon, you find that this is just a local transformation corresponding to Kruskal now translation. But if it's some some general points, and then it turns out this trans, uh, transformation is actually non-local. Okay, but non-local in the way which actually preserves the causal structure. Okay, uh, 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 for example, as I already mentioned. Uh, 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 even though the, uh, the evolution is non-local, but it does, but at least take S0 for you to cross the horizon. Okay, there's no faster way for you to cross the horizon. And so the non-locality is actually uh, uh, respect to the causality. Okay. Good, so, uh, so now let me just formulate a little bit further on the uh, causal structure due to the horizon, uh, how we can see it from the boundary. So now you can, now you can uh, uh, formulate a more complicated question. So let's start with, uh, uh, and now this is a UV coordinate. Again, this now this, this orange line are the horizons. And now I start with a point, the so X1, phi R, and then I evolve it, okay? But now I look at the commutator with another operator on the left region, say at a point X2. So in order for them to have a, a long zero commutator, and this have to cross the horizon and then enter the right night crown of this X2. Okay, so geometrically, uh, you see the shortest distance to do that is just you go along this null line. And then the distance again, uh, uh, null distance again, this U1 plus U2. Okay, and then when you do this calculation, then precisely what do you find? Okay, you find when S smaller than, yeah, this because of the, uh, uh, for the right region, the U1 is actually negative. So, so, so for S smaller than this value, uh, 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 then you find this is identical to zero. But for S greater than this value, you find that the commutator become non zero. Okay, so, uh, uh, so, uh, so as I said, this evolution is actually uh, in general non local. So, so there's some finite spread, but this finite spread is perfectly compatible with the causal structure. Okay. Good. And so, so, so actually, you can do a little bit more. So, so as I mentioned, in general, this uh, uh, evolution is non-local, but it, actually there's a limit, this evolution become local. Yeah, uh, uh, near the horizon become local, but, uh, but there's a lot of limit, this, uh, 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 
this transformation become local everywhere outside the horizon. And this is the regime which is the mass of this scalar field to be large, or just say the large uh, operator dimension limit. But by large, I mean just large of all the way, it's it, it still uh, always independent of n. Okay. So, so in this case, say if we let's say average over the boundary spatial direction, so let's don't, don't care about the, the, the boundary spatial direction because that makes things a bit more complicated. So if we just concentrate on the, on the time direction so that we focus on the cross cut plane. And then you find, then you find in the large mass limit so that you can do some WKB, let's say, say for the, uh, yeah, for this, uh, 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 yeah. And then you find uh, uh, this evolution actually is local. And actually it evolves this way. So if you start with the Kruska coordinate U0 and B0, and then transform the points, half the value, the Kruska value US given by U0 plus S and the VS given by this uh, uh, expression. And uh, um, so, so you can just plot it, uh, uh, what does this evolution looks like? So this is example. So if you start with a point here, yeah, so this is a flow diagram. Uh, a flow trajectory. So, so, so if you start with a point here, and if I flow in the positive S direction, then just take you across the horizon. And then if I flow in the negative direction, then just go in that direction. Yeah, again, you can also do the for the left region, etc. Okay. So this is a flow uh, trajectory. And you can also look at, say, a constant t equal to zero slice and see how this whole slice evolves. And that is the uh, 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 constant S slice. Uh, uh, yeah, so so, and uh, uh, so 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 above is positive s and below is negative s. Okay. So you see, uh, uh, taking into this slice which cross the horizon, and uh, yeah, so this is not exactly Kruska slice, but it's Kruska like slice. Okay, uh, yeah, good. So just to summarize. So if you use the standard CF, uh, yeah, as I mentioned, because you have a, a global killing vectors outside the horizon, uh, because you have killing vectors, yeah, not global killing vectors, you have killing vectors, uh, uh, time-like killing vectors outside the horizon. And then using the standard ADSAFT dictionary, you can naturally extend the boundary time to the region outside the horizon. And then you can do your standard story, the HKLL or bulk reconstruction, et cetera, just use the extension of this boundary time. And so this is the standard ADS-CFT story. We understand very well, which give you the finite term of the physics. Is but just from- a, Is there a simple understanding of why your large mass limit did not give the geodesic? Um, yeah, because, because this evolution is not, somehow does not have a, a intrinsic relation with the, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, because you just consider some time evolution. Uh, 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 that does not have to follow geodesics, yeah. So in principle, the, by constructing some other, uh, you know, U of S that you defined earlier, in, in principle, you could see geodesic, is that possible? Uh, it might be, it might be. Uh, um, yeah, just here for this, uh, for the simplest one we do, it's not related to geodesics. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so, so the standard dictionary, you can have this duality CFTR with the R region and CFTL with the left region. But in principle, if I don't tell you the bulk geometry, you don't know whether this L and the right are connected, et cetera, there are various conjectures. But, but, so, but now with this explicit US, okay, essentially we can start with the right and left region, and then now we can reconstruct the whole space time, okay. Uh, 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 essentially, uh, uh, this US, this to a new emerging in falling time, and now with this new emerging falling time, now it just start with this time slice, uh, you can explain a principle map of the full uh, future and, uh, uh, and the past region, okay. And now you can actually uh, 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 reconstruct the full space time. So, so as I uh, uh, emphasized, uh, uh, mentioned earlier, actually there's infinite number of choices of such informing times. Uh, so the one I mentioned, just one of the simplest one, uh, uh, but you can construct, uh, 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 consider more complicated ones. Yeah. Good. So, um, so now let's say, say go back a little bit, tell you a little bit the technique, uh, 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 
the important ingredient we will use to do such construction. And so this is related to how do we understand entanglement in the relativistic QFT, okay. So, uh, so now let's just remind you the simple story. So how we normally describe entanglement of a quantum system, not a quantum field theory, say uh, uh, some ordinary quantum mechanical system. So imagine you have say some quantum system, we separate into two parts and the Hilbert space and then, then can be tensor factorized into the Hilbert space associated with the part one and then the, uh, then the complement part of the part two. Okay. And then, then you take any states, okay, for simplicity, let's take a, pure, uh, take a pure state. And then you can trace out the, say, degrees freedom in, in two, and then you get a reduced density operator in, in, for the system one, okay, subsystem one. Now, of course, this row one contains all the quantum information about the system. And uh, then, then there are many, many different ways to extract quantum information by doing various manipulations on row one, say Rayleigh entropies, volume entropies, activities, and many other things, okay. And for example, yeah, uh, uh, the simplest, uh, uh, the most frequently used is this volume entropy. So, so in principle, this row one tells you all kinds of entanglement between one and two and, uh, and, uh, and the quantum information structure of the state. But now there's something special happens uh, uh, and you can do something similar with row two. Okay, you can construct with the row two too. But now something sim interesting happens when the row, row one and the row two both are full rank. Okay. So, so when both row, uh, when Draw one full rank, that means that the, the system one is fully entangled with system two. Okay, if it's, uh, uh, if they are not entangled, then row one will be a pure state, then that will have a rank one. Okay, then cannot be a full rank. So full rank means that the row one is actually highly entangled, say with system two. And similarly, a row two is full rank, means that the system two is highly entangled with system one. So when both row one and row two are full rank, and then this additional structure exists. And now I can construct something called the modular operator, defined as follows, row two, row one, minus one, okay. And uh, so, so here you, you see in order to take the inverse, you want this uh, row one to be full rank. And in order for this delta to have a, a inverse, then you want row two also to be full rank. Okay. Otherwise this uh, uh, modular operator does not exist. So, so the module operator have the following nice property. Okay, say if you act this module operator on any operator, say this B H one means that any op uh, the class uh, 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 means collection of operators uh, belongs to the uh, to the system one. So if you act on any, so if you exponentiate it to to I T to construct a unitary operator, and act on any operator in system one. And it takes you still in, then the resulting operator remains in system one. And similarly with system two, okay. So this is essentially triviality in this case, because the because of row one and row two, they commute, by definition they commute. And then, then when you evolve it, and then you essentially just revolve it using row one, then of course you still remains in the, in, in the system one, okay. The same thing with here. So, so here the story is somewhat tri trivial, but still you have this additional structure. Okay, so this is normally called the modular flow. So existence of the modular flow, even though you don't know row one, row two, but if you say uh, the modular flow exists, then there's another way to say these two systems are highly entangled. Okay, there's another way to say this is highly entangled. So now, the, so now the important thing is that for quantum field theory, none of the other structure exists. And this modular flow is essentially the only structure exists. Okay, so, so now let me just elaborate that a little bit. So now let's consider entanglement in quantum field theory. So then, uh, 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 let's consider QFT in Minkowski space time. And we can, uh, as usual, separate into the uh, four Windler regions, say the right region, left region, future region, past region. So this is four Windler regions, okay. 
So now let's imagine this QFT is in the Minkowski vacuum state. Okay, it's in the uh, vacuum state with back to the standard Minkowski time. So it is often said that Minkowski vacuum state can be interpreted as thermal field double state for the right and the left Rindler patches. Okay, and so this is the standard story. And this has, yeah, this shows that the right and the left patches are highly entangled. And this also tells you that uh, the ground state of, uh, 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 of a QFT is highly entangled. Okay. So this state may actually give us a lot of insights. But strictly speaking, this statement is not correct. As strictly speaking, this statement is only correct in the discretized theory. Say, say this statement can only made mathematically precise if you discretize your system or uh, uh, put them on the lattice or, or you put some kind of uh, 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 what is called a brick wall at the horizon, okay? Uh, you can also consider the continuum system, but you have to put a brick wall at the horizon. Anyway, so, so strictly speaking, this statement is only correct when you have some kind of UV cutoff at the horizon. And otherwise, the statement is not correct. Uh, even though, uh, yeah, even, yeah, yeah, most of the time we use this uh, 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 regularized theory, uh, uh, which you put a short distance cutoff uh, uh, to describe the system. Okay. So, 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 so in most situations, it doesn't matter. Okay, the distinction is not so, so important, uh, even though mathematically, uh, uh, this is only correct with a short distance cutoff. But for what I'm going to talk about, actually, the difference is fundamental. Okay, so 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 they actually fundamental differences between the discrete and the continuous cases. And so so now, now let's just make a comparison between the discrete and continuum cases. So in the discrete cases, you actually have a local Hilbert space for the left and the right window regions, and the full Hilbert space can be factorized in terms of HR uh, times HL. Uh, 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 as the usual uh, uh, quantum mechanical story. Um, yeah. Um, but, but in the continuum case, such kind of factorization just does not exist. Okay. Uh, 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 um, you cannot factorize it. Any factorized state have infinite energy. So here, because you have a factorized Hilbert space, you can define reduced density matrix, but here does not exist. Okay. Just and here you can define entanglement entropy, but here it's just not well defined. Okay, uh, but, uh, uh, when you remove the cutoff dependence, and then the entropy goes to infinite. And there's no intrinsic way you can define entropy here. Okay, it's just not defined. And uh, but even though all those structure which we used to define entanglement for ordinary quantum me mechanical system don't exist. But the module operator and the module flow exist in the, in the continuum. And that's how we tell in the continuum theory that the, uh, the ground state is actually highly entangled. Okay. But there's also important distinction between the discrete and continuum case uh, for the module operator. Because here, uh, as before, when you can factorize, this module operator itself can be factorized. So as I wrote earlier, that module operator can be written as row two times row one minus one. So you have this product structure, okay? If a factorized structure be between system one and system two. But in the continuum case, actually you cannot factorize them. Okay. Yeah, because reduced density matrix don't exist. So there's no way you can factorize it. But such operator exists, but you cannot factorize it. Okay. And now there's not a, very crucial dip, uh, uh, difference, which actually will be important for the box story, uh, uh, for the gravity story, the, is that in the discrete case, there's no sharp light cone. Once you put your theory on the lattice, once you put some short distance cutoff, then there's always, when you look at the commutators between the space-like operators, there's always some small tail. Yeah, uh, 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 so there's actually here in the discrete system, you cannot define a sharp light cone. But of course we know that in the continuum case, the sharp light cone exists, okay. So even though this 
sharp, sharp or large sharp light cone seems to be very different from the other stories. It, it, it turns out they're actually very, very closely related, okay. And all these differences can be understood in a fundamental way in terms of the operate algebra structure uh, 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 of the two series, okay. So now if you look at the operator algebras in the, in the right region, in the right window region, it turns out they have very different structures for the discrete case and for, uh, for the continuum case. And all these differences can be understood in terms of this operator structure. This is highly not obvious, okay? Uh, 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 highly not obvious because those statements seem to have nothing to do with operator structure, but ten, it turns out they can all be understood in terms of the operator structure. And in the discrete case, it turns out you have a type one volume algebra. And, uh, and for the continuum case, we have a type three one volume algebra. So I will not go into details how you, def uh, uh, how you define volume algebras and how you classify them into type one or type three one, et cetera. So let me just mention that type one just corresponding to the standard operator algebra, which can act on the Hilbert, yeah, which corresponding to the bounded operator in the Hilbert space. But type three one is much more trickier, okay? Uh, 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 so, so you may think those features, okay? Uh, uh, say there's no local Hilbert space, no reduced density matrix, this modular operator, all these things. You may think of them as physical manifestation of this type three one volume algebra, even though I will not define mathematically for you. Okay, yeah, just take a little bit time to do it. Good. Any question on this? I had a kind of a general question. So because yeah. you mentioned uh, sharp light cone versus no sharp light cone, so uh, do you expect that at finite end the bulk light cones are not sharp? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's why I say this is very important for the gravity story. It's because we can show related to this emergence horizon story uh, uh, that you, if you have a finite end, then you cannot have a sharp, uh, sharp uh, horizon. Yeah, the horizon must be smeared. Yeah, this is something which we all intuitively expect, but, but using this kind of technique, you can actually show it explicitly. Yeah, uh, Hong, I had a, a question about uh, this stuff. So suppose I have a two-dimensional conformal field theory. Yeah. And, uh, I'm talking about, let us say, the vacuum uh, state. Um, and the half line is my subregion mm -hmm. uh, one. And the, uh, the left uh, half line is a subregion two. Mm -hmm. uh, now uh, I can show that the... <clears throat> reduced density matrix. Uh, well, I, I thought I can show that the reduced density matrix is uh, basically, um, you know, the rotation operator um, of that plane. Uh, and, and therefore, you know, whatever property of the reduced density matrix that I can uh, think of, I can just look at the, you know, the angular rotation operator mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, be done with it. So what, what, what would be the subtlety here? I mean... Uh... Yeah, yeah. So the subtlety here is that when you say, um, you can always define formally this, uh, say using this replica trick, uh, uh, say you can define, but you always have to introduce some kind of cutoff. And uh, 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 your, uh, your reduced density matrix and your entanglement entropy or rainy entropy you compute in any of this kind of replica uh, trick, you, uh, you always have to have some cu uh, 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 cutoff. And, uh, and the key is that when you remove that cutoff and all this, yeah, just, you see the standard technique is that fo uh, uh, following. Yeah, I'm not saying that proceed, uh, that kind of procedure have given us uh, have given us tremendous insight in the sense that you introduce a cutoff, and then you can find the reduced density matrix. You can find the entropy, and then even though those entropy depend on the cutoff, but you can extract some cutoff independent piece, and that give you a uh, 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 important physical equation, etc. 
Yeah, that's all fine. That's all very beautiful. Uh, we have learned a lot of insight from here. But uh, here I'm just emphasizing the different structure here. If you want to really def define this quantity in the continuum limit, it's just not, not defined. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 it's not defined. And, uh, and so that procedure is more like some kind of approximate procedure, but you can, uh, from that approximate procedure, you can extract something about the continuum limit. Okay, because if you look at this entropy, uh, uh, it has a part which is divergent, but it also have a finite part. And that finite part actually tells you important information about the continuum limit, which we can extract. Uh, but, but this is more like a mathematical trick. Okay, okay, because that entropy itself is not well defined in the continuum limit. Yeah, that's true. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Good, okay. Yeah, yeah, I just say for the, in the standard story, this distinction is not so important, but, but for certain questions we are interested in, say for the emerging horizon, for emerging time, and then distinction become very key. Yeah, yeah, just depend on the question you are interested in. Okay. Uh, one, one other question. Um, so for now, uh, let me forget about the fact that um, the interior or sub-horizon bulk fields um, can only be reconstructed in usual methods by using bulk equations of motions. Uh, so modulo that issue, uh, let's uh, construct them uh, the way uh, people have studied. So some sub-horizon bulk operator in the infinite n limit can be written uh, in terms of the left and right uh, boundary operators. Uh, so uh, in that construction, because it's an uh, infinite n construction, so it's actually should be the continuum case, but people are still talking about left and right um, boundary operators. So was that description redundant? I mean, should, we ha should people have really said that it's actually I'm doing the construction in full field theory? Um. Oh, or, yeah. or in that construction, should we have expected a non-sharp light cone? No, no. In that story, you are you are strictly in the infinite m limit, right? Yeah. yeah. Because you are using the bulk geometry, and so 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 the light cone certainly is sharp there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, yeah. But it's just that uh, I mean, people talked about left and right uh, boundary operators, but it was. I mean, in, we should have really, I mean, one should have really thought about, um, you know, it's actually the continuum case. So there is actually no um, tensor factorization between left and right. No, 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 in that case you do, right? In that case you build in. So yeah, uh, 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 so that's why this story does not, yeah, uh, 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 let me emphasize this story, this Rindler story is very different uh, uh, from, from uh, 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 yeah, that's something I'm going to emphasize later. But if, if, since you are asking, uh, 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 I'm just emphasizing it now. So this story is conceptually very different from the black hole case, because here there's no factorization between L and R, but in the black hole case there is factorization because you have two separate CFTs. So by definition, they're factorized. Uh, yeah, but I believe even for Rindler, if I want to construct some, uh, you know, operator in future region, then one used to say things about, you know, constructing them in terms of left and right boundary. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, in terms of left and the right part, it does not depend on whether they're factorized or not. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, good. Um, okay, so this story is actually very general for relativistic QFTs. For any local region, the local operator algebra can be associated with some type 3 y monoma algebra. Okay. And uh, uh, so this have very important implications, say for the entang... Yeah, so this statement itself say a lot about the, the uh, entanglement structure of relativistic QFTs. And, uh, and then the entanglement for any local regions can be understood in terms of modular flows associated with such algebraic structure. So, so now it turns out 
this type three one volume algebra structure actually give you something additional. Okay, uh, uh, this uh, there's something unique to this three one volume algebra which is not happened to other type of volume algebra. So now let me uh, 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 talk about that. Uh, so that's called half sided modular uh, translation. Okay. Uh, um, so 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 I have to use a little mathematical language. Okay. Um, so so let's say let's suppose monuma, uh, uh, this m is a monuma algebra, and the vector omega is cyclic separating for m. Okay. So 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 let me just paraphrase this mathematical statement in terms of this Rindler statement. Uh, uh, in the Rindler context. So in the Rindler context, this M would be the operator algebra in the right Rindler region. Okay, uh, so, uh, so as I said, that's a, a type three by volume algebra. And then this vector would be just uh, 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 the, uh, the vacuum, okay. And the fact that this is a cyclic and separating for M. So there's a very simple translation that into the, into the case which you have the, um, yeah, yeah. In the standard the quantum mechanical case, the, the cyclical and the separating for M, it just means what I said earlier. It means the row one and the row two both are full rank. Okay. When both and row one and row two are full rank, then the algebra associated with system one, and then then it's a cyclic and uh, and the separating with respect to your state. Okay. Anyway, uh, so this is the statement. Uh, 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 essentially, you, you should view just this is a mathematical formalization for this statement that the uh, density operators are, are full rank in the case when you can, in the case when you can talk about uh, density operator, uh, reduced density operator. When you cannot talk about reduced density operator, then you have to use this uh, terminology. Okay. Anyway, so this is just some terminology, some properties means uh, 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 this algebra is highly entangled with something else. Okay. And now there is, suppose there exists a volume and sub algebra N with the following property that this omega is also cyclic uh, 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 for N, okay? So, so uh, 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 and uh, that if you act modular flows of M, so M is a volume algebra, so I have associated modular flows. If you act modular flows of M on N, and if you act the, the modular flow uh, uh, with t smaller than zero, you find it does not take you outside n, okay? And when you take t greater than zero, then can take it outside n. But, uh, but as far as it does not take you outside n for t smaller than zero. Uh, uh, um, yeah, suppose <laughs> such algebra exists. Uh, 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 we call that this structure called the half-sided modular inclusion, okay? So, so so if this condition is satisfied, and if the algebra is type three one, and then there's a powerful uh, a set of powerful theorem by Borchers and Westbrook, yeah Westbrook, saying then there exists a unitary operator, a, a unitary group with the following properties. Yeah, this is what I wrote earlier. The US generated by some Hermitian operator, but this Hermitian operator is funded from below. Okay. So this is unique to this type three one structure. Okay, and in particular, this uh, 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 this uh, evolution leave your vacuum invariant. Okay. Uh, um, so so now yeah, as I mentioned, because now you have a new generator, you have some generator with spectrum bounded from below, and essentially this generates new times. Okay. So each time we can find such a structure. This time we can find such a structure, you find the sub-algebra whose modular flow is the included, uh, 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 yeah, uh, uh, satisfy this property. And then essentially you have some emerging time. Okay. Uh, and so that's the main thing we are going to use. So just to give you some intuition, uh, 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 let me tell you a simple example. So, um, so let's just imagine again, imagine this right window region uh, and the, uh, uh, let's imagine this operate algebra in the right uh, window region is what we call the M. Okay, so this is some volume algebra. It's the operate algebra in the right region. And now let's look at the sub algebra, which is this N. Okay, and now you can show this sub algebra actually satisfy the properties I mentioned earlier. 
And, and so this is just by a law shift uh, uh, related to the M. Okay, and so, uh, so N covers operator algebra in this region, in this uh, purple shaded region. And now, now, now you combine this M and N, now you can write uh, uh, an evolution operator, which is bounded from below. It turns out for this particular case, this G is something we are long. So this G just generates the law of translation along the X minus direction. Okay, just generates the uh, law of translation in X minus direction. So if you can see there's some other uh, a sub edge, but then you can also uh, uh, generate the law of translation along the X plus direction. Okay. Anyway, so so sorry, but very stupid question. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, sorry. Yeah, so, but this would be basically be P plus, correct? Yeah, yeah. This is a P plus. Yeah. So, but would that be so? But why is that? Is that bounded from below? Yeah, yeah. P plus is bounded from below. Yeah. Um. So I, I can understand that H is bounded from below, but uh, is P plus also bounded because it's, it contains also momentum, right? Yeah, it's H plus P. Yeah. So 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 H is always greater than P. Yeah, oh. for the unsteady state. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah, for the physical state. Yeah. Good. So, yeah, so this have the future, a, a, a feature that this evolution, if you act on the original algebra, then for S smaller than zero, just translate you within the algebra. So in particular, if you translate by value one, yeah, just depend on your normalization of S and then take you from M to N. But now if you take S greater than zero, and then, then, then we'll shift this M Region into a larger region, uh, into this future region of the windowless region, and then when you take s greater than zero, actually this this u can be used to generate the future and the past region from the algebras of the right and left region. So, in other words, in this simple example, by choosing different subalgebras, okay, if I only give you the windowless right and the left, and they tell you that the windowless and the right and the left the, the operator algebra have this rewind pro uh, us rewind a uh, uh, one algebra. And then actually I can generate the full Minkowski space time for you. Okay, I can generate the full Minkowski uh, 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 space time. For you. And so and so this is the analog. Okay, this is inspiration we will use it to, to generate the future and the past region for the black hole case. We will start with the right and the left region of the black hole, and then that will generate the full black hole space time for us. But then for a black hole, then there's some additional story uh, uh, we have to tell first. Okay. Um, yeah, so the key is that this type three one algebra and the proper chosen subalgebra leads to a new emergent time. Oh, I just realized I'm already uh, way over time. Um, Oh, well, this is perfectly fine. <laughs> no problem. Okay. 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 Good. Okay. Yeah. So, so now let me tell you uh, uh, these boundary constructions of emergent in falling time. So, so first we have to do a little bit further thing. Okay. So the black hole is actually described by CFTR and the CFT time CFTL in the thermal field double state. So here, by definition, the boundary theory we have a tensor product structure. Okay, uh, it, it, it just by definition. Uh, 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 so, so, so this story is actually very different from the window case, uh, 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 from the standard QFT case. In the QFT case, you don't have a factorized structure, but here we are guaranteed to have a factorized structure because by uh, 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 our starting point. So now if you look at the operate algebra for the right, re, uh, for the right CFT or for the left CFT, this is actually type Y. Because you have a factorized structure, and then if you look at the operate algebra of them, you just have the standard type one story. Okay. And if you have a standard type one story, then we don't have emerging time. Okay. Uh, uh, then we don't have emerging time. But now I want to argue. Okay. I now want to argue in the large n limit, there is, there is actually an emerging type three one volume algebra in the large n limit which leads to the emergence in falling times and the emergence of a sharp horizon on the interior. Okay. So, so to understand- Can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, in the previous slide, when you have an inclusion of N inside M, is it so that because both are three one, 
which you are which you are possibly assuming that there is a joint cyclic and separating vector that you want to work with that's right that's right yeah that's okay. right yeah good yeah yeah this is important yeah yeah so this is in the condition here uh, 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 the, the omega is also cyclic for n and the big yeah yeah, yeah because n is a sub algebra so it's automatically separating for for omega yeah. Right. So in the case of Minkowski space, omega is just the ground state, right? Vacuum. Yeah, vacuum. yeah, just ground state. Yeah. 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 For the uh, for the Minkowski, just ground state, and then this property is of course it's automatic. Yeah. Yeah. Just the uh, it, it just follow from the uh, Rich Schneider. Yeah. Good. Uh, uh, so now I'm going to argue in the in the in this case actually this emergent type three one you are algebra. And to see this uh, uh, emerging volume of symmetry, but let's just look at the single trace operators. Okay, so now let's, in the large n limit, we can talk about single trace operators. The, the single trace operators, if you multiply them together, they form an algebra. Okay. Uh, 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 so the so let's using this AR to denote the, the algebra generated by single trace operators of the CFT. And now. So, so, so acting on the Hilbert space of the CFT itself, okay. So, so this single trace operator algebra of the CFT R, then of course it's act on the, on the Hilbert space of the CFT. And then now there's a very important thing regarding the volume algebra. He said when you define the volume algebra, you have to define the volume algebra in terms of some kind of weak convergence limit. And in order to define that in terms of weak convergence limit, then you actually have to specify a Hilbert space. So, so when you act, when this AR actually act on this, uh, uh, the, the Hilbert space of CFTR, this is actually not a volume edge. Okay, just does not satisfy the properties of volume edge. Uh, again, I will not go into the technical detail here. Uh, just you can show this cannot be a volume edge. But then, now I will, but, but in the large n limit, it turns out there's another Hilbert space here. Okay, it turns out there's another Hilbert space here. So, so in the large n limit, there's another Hilbert space, which is, which let me call this HGNS. So this is the Hilbert space of small excitations around the thermal field double state. So by small excitations, I mean, you just act single trace operators on the thermal field double states. Okay, so you act finite number of them. You don't take n square of them. You act, yeah, you can act lots of them, but uh, but uh, but but they uh, uh, by small excitation, just they don't generate order. They don't generate energy. Say it depend on n. Okay. So, so, so now you can I, show. Can I quickly ask just to clarify? So when you say that uh, the bounded operator algebra of CFTR or CFTL, you're talking about the full set of CFT operators. Is that correct? Right, that's right. And AR is just a single trace, guys. And exactly. um, the, 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 the full set is type one because uh, the, the boundary is compact. Is it, is it, the bound, is, is it a sphere that's for the thermophile double state? Is that the reason? Right, uh, uh, even if it's not compact, even it's a, uh, uh, say, uh, uh, even if you take just to be the uh, plane, mm -hmm. uh, it's still type one. It just, uh, it, it just, the, uh, just essentially by definition, the full sets, the full operator algebra on the, op on the Hilbert space is always trivially type one. Oh, I see. It's only on the subregions that you have the type three one structure. Is that, is that exactly. It? Okay, thank you. Exactly. Only when you look at the subregion, uh, 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 then you have a type three one structure. But here for, for describe the physics outside the horizon is the full operator algebra. Because it's not a sub region, yeah. So that's why we actually need to work with the uh, the operator defined for the full space time, full boundary space time. Okay. So so now there's actually a lot of Hilbert space which emerges in the infinite n limit. So this is a Hilbert space of small excitations around the sum of your double state. So intuitively there's a space there. Okay. But then there's a precise mathematical procedure called the GNS construction. Uh, you can make it precise actually to show that it actually has a Hilbert space structure. Okay. You can define inner product 
and the inner product is well defined, etc. And uh, and there's no lactive norm state, etc. Uh, there's no null null states. Yeah. Anyway, you can uh, rigorously construct uh, a Hilbert space. And now yeah. in this now so acting on this Hilbert space. Okay. Turns out this single choice operate algebra uh, 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 act on this Hilbert space. Uh, 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 yeah, let me just denote the edge. Yeah, just to distinguish uh, uh, the algebra of the original operator act on the original CFT. Uh, yeah, act on the original Hilbert space, uh, the full Hilbert space. And now, now let me uh, 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 denote the representation of this AR on the GNS Hilbert space as MR. Okay. Um, no, it's, it's, sorry, Hong, can I, uh, sorry, just to uh, clarify. Yeah. Uh, so the algebra of small excitations, I don't quite understand. I mean, in the sense that um, an algebra by definition should allow closure under, um, you know, arbitrary product of uh, operators. So how do you restrict the num uh, number of operators to be something of order one, I mean, in, in the end counting, that is. Right, so in the infinite n limit, your n is already taken to be infinite. Yeah, just like in the, uh, 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 when you, yeah. So this aspect is exactly as what you normally do for construct the Fox space, say in the free field theory. Oh, and, okay, uh, I see. So, it, uh, so it's not really, I mean, there is a there is then no need to call it small excitations at all or what? Yeah, yeah. There's no need to call it small. Uh, by, by small excitations, that only means that uh, the energy uh, created is independent of n. Uh, yeah, we already take n go to infinity. So so whatever you construct is independent, and I just want to emphasize that point. Okay. Yeah, that we mean by uh, by small excitations. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so I have a question regarding this. Maybe I don't know how it how really uh, maybe it is relevant. Uh, so usually when you talk about these kind of excitations, uh, like so small excitations, they uh, then your entanglement where it depends or can uh, will depend on the subspace because in certain case you can push the quantum extremal surface below behind the horizon only in the some subspace of this. Uh, States and sometimes you can't, so it will depend on this uh, this particular subspace. Uh, so in that case, uh, it it would be that this uh, that when you talk about the subalgebra of this whole thing, uh, then it becomes complicated because some uh, some of the subalgebra sees uh, some parts of the interiors and some uh, in some subspace it will not see it in other subspace. Uh, so it depends. Uh, it's very really subspace dependent then. Depending on which subspace of this thing you're talking about, the subalgebra would also change. Yeah. So, 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 uh, yeah. So, so here we are considering the full single trace operator algebra is not restricted to any region, just full space time. Indeed, hmm. if you uh, uh, consider a sub region in the boundary, then the story is more complicated. Indeed, there, uh, there will be some interesting uh, 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 complications. Uh, 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 in that story, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so that story should certainly be understood. Uh, I think the framework here can be used to uh, 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 to understand that story too. Just that story is more complicated. Yeah. No, no. I just confused. I asked this at this point simply because you were you. It's important that you also consider subalgebra for, for the. No, no, no. Here we are not no, 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 no. No, you will see the subalgebra will uh, will be different kind of subalgebra. You are. Uh, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's either the full left or full right. Okay, maybe. Okay, sorry. Yeah, Thanks. yeah. Here we are talking about the full right and the full left, and then. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. No, my confusion. Because, I understand. Yeah. my confusion came because of the previous picture of the Minkowski space. Sorry, I forgot. That. Sorry. Okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. So, so now the now the conjecture. He said you can do similar thing for MR and ML, and this is type three one. Okay, so this is a conjecture. So, so there's one we support we can give to it. So the first is that if you look at spectral function of single trace operator at finite temperature, and you find there's a continuous spectrum, except yeah, we're not going to there. Anyway, there's some support there we describe in the paper. And the second is that you can uh, explicitly construct this half-sided modular structure. Uh, uh, for, for this story. And so that's a lot of support. As I mentioned, this half-sided modular structure only applies for type 3, 1. 
And the third one, I think is more familiar to us. And so, uh, 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 so I'm going to talk about the third support is from the, uh, so this is also required by duality with the bark. So, so, so in the bark, let me just remind you the story in the bark using a more algebraic language. So we have in the bark, we, again, we consider large n image. So in the large n image, essentially in the black hole, just reduced to quantum field theory in the curved space time. And then you can do perturbatively in G Newton, okay? So there you can just, uh, yes, yeah, so here you just essentially have quantum field theory in curved space time. And then you have, you can build a fork space around the heart of Hawking vacuum. Okay, because the heart of Hawking vacuum is the one which due to the thermal field double. And, uh, and then you can have operate algebra, the gravity field operate algebra, say associated with the right region, with the left region, which are called M tilde R, M tilde left. And now the standard duality story, say including the uh, sub region duality applied to the uh, region outside the horizon can be formulated as we identify this gene S Hilbert space, say of single trace excitations acting on the thermal field double state. Yeah, because there's a one to one correspondence between the single trace operator and the bark field. And then the fork space uh, in the bark. Okay. And then the vacuum in this gene S Hilbert space then is identified with Hart Hawking vacuum. And then we also identify the corresponding edge. So to, uh, to draw in the uh, in the same diagram which I used before, then the standard ADSCFT dictionary can be understood as we identify this MR with ML R tilde and ML tilde with ML. Okay. So now by consistency, okay, if we want to reconstruct the full black hole geometry, and then we know that in the full black hole geometry, this M tilde R and M tilde L is just a sub region. Okay, and then we hear in the bark here uh, in large n image, then we are talking about quantum field theory in the curved space time. And again, the similar statement apply. You look at the operate algebra for quantum field theory in the curved space time in the sub region, and then that should be type three one volume algebra. Okay, so so by consistency of the duality, that also require this MR and ML to be the type three one volume algebra. Actually, this, this is, uh, uh, yeah, uh, 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 there's various things I can say more about here, but, uh, uh, but given time, uh, uh, let me not mention that. Yeah. Anyway, so, so now we have this structure, okay, uh, 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 the algebraic structure. Now we have this emergent type 3 one monuma algebra, and then we have this duality between MR and MR tilde, ML and MD tilde. And now uh, our goal, is to find some US, okay? And then, then we have to find some volume and sub algebra of MR, okay? Or ML, it, it, it's similar, yeah. Okay, so, so let me just tell you the basic idea. So, uh, so, so let me just make some general statement. So, so where the, so, so even though the theorems of half-sided modular translation, they ensure the existence of this unitary operator, to actually construct this unitary operator is actually in general is very, very difficult. And this, yeah, those theorem is more like some kind of existence theorem. They, uh, they, they don't tell you how to construct it, okay? And so in special cases like the Rindler, you can do it, but, but in general, uh, 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 it's very hard. But in the large N limit, the algebra of single trace operators actually can be described uh, so this GNS Hilbert space can actually be described by, uh, 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 by a generalized free field theory because it's just not gen factorization of correlation functions, okay? So in large gen limit, essentially uh, you have generalized free fields. And then in this regime, then we can show, okay? Uh, 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 so, uh, uh, so this is a highly non-trivial uh, 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 highly non-trivial result. Uh, so so this is, in this you can show that this, uh, this US from this, half-sided module translation actually have a universal form. You can determine it to a universal form up to a phase factor. And the dependence on specific algebras and specific series only uh, go into that phase factor. Okay, 
So, so if you want to apply it to a specific series, you just need to find that phase factor. Okay. And now, so before I tell you the sub edge, but let me just make a lot of general comments. So if you look at the standard the causal diamond, yeah, just look at the causal, uh, 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 look at the causal diamond. So, so for the standard QFT, uh, so in the standard quantum field theory story, if you have algebra associated with this Cauchy slice of the diamond, and if you have the algebra associated with the, the, uh, a lot of Cauchy slice, and these two are equivalent, okay? Because, because you just, A2 is the evolution of A1, okay? Uh, so every, uh, every operating A2 can be expressed in terms of the operators in A1. And uh, so these two algebra are, uh, are equivalent. But the key, this is not so for algebras of single trace operators. So when you have single trace operators, okay, when you involve single trace operators, say A1 uh, by, your, uh, by your standard Heisenberg evolution, that take you outside the single trace operator algebra. Okay. And similarly, uh, uh, if you try to express A2 back in terms of uh, 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 this slice, and that take you outside the single trace operator algebra. So, so when you think about the algebra of single trace operators, the A1, A2 actually are inequivalent. Okay. And this inequivalence again is only in the larger limit. Okay. And this inequivalence is crucial because that gives you lots of opportunities, okay? New opportunities for new sub algebras because of this inequivalence. So now let me give you an example. So let's imagine the, the M is the, the MR. So, so this MR, which I defined, is the single trace open algebra for the full boundary space time, okay? So, so now let me use this cartoon, this uh, 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 full rectangle to describe the full boundary space time. So vertical direction is time and the horizontal direction you can consider as a spatial direction. Say if it's one plus one, and then can imagine this, the horizontal direction, just a circle with these two sides uh, identified, okay. So the M corresponding to the algebra for the full space time. And now let's consider a sub algebra corresponding to the operator algebras cover all the space, but only to the time t equal to zero. Okay, so, so in the standard QFT, these two algebra are equivalent because they can all be expressed in terms of single time slice. Okay, but for the single trace open algebra, and now these two are in are inequivalent algebras. In particular, N is a sub algebra of this M, of course, by definition. Okay. And you can also consider some other sub algebras. For example, N corresponding to subset of operators, single trace operators, say for T greater than zero. You can also consider other examples. Say, say rather than T equal to zero, we can consider that N is the operator algebra below some kind of some kind of curve which depend on time. Okay, yeah, it, it, yeah, some, some arbitrary Cauchy slice. Similarly, you can uh, uh, to the future of some Cauchy slice. Anyway, there's just an infinite number of such can emerge in time. Okay. And uh, 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 now, the, uh, 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 for any such choice, you have, uh, 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 yeah, uh, so this is consistent because of the bark, the bark time should be infinite number of them, okay? Because you can choose the, uh, uh, the bulk Cauchy slice in the arbitrary way. Anyway, so now suppose we look at this example, which N only covers the T smaller than zero part of, uh, yeah, N to be this sub algebra. And as I said that the, uh, in the large N limit, you can reduce everything to a generalized free field, then we can actually reduce this U to to a phase factor, to a universal form up to a phase factor. But finding that phase factor is actually not easy because that phase factor is a strongly coupled problem. Okay, you have to, uh, 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 we don't know how to find that phase factor. Uh, say for example, if you give me some CFT2, uh, uh, at the moment, I don't know how to find that phase factor. And if you give me an equal to super young wheel theory, I also don't know how to find that phase factor, even though, uh, because that involved the, non-trivial uh, two-point functions 
uh, and strong coupling. But now, but there's a simple way we can actually find this fact, phase factor by proposing another duality with the bulk. Okay, now, our, now we propose another duality. It said the sub algebra in this region N, we propose that this is dual to the sub algebra in this bulk region. This N tilde essentially is the causal wedge associated with this N. So N covers from minus t equal to infinity to, to t equal to zero. And then you just draw your causal wedge in the bulk of this region. And then, then this bulk region, we, uh, uh, yeah, we argue, we have some argument that this n tilde, the, the operate, bulk operate edge, but in this n tilde is actually dual to the boundary algebra n. Okay. So there's various support we can give to this. Uh, 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 yeah. Anyway, and now, by working this until the algebra, because in the bug, we have a generally free theory. Okay, even though it's in the curved space time, it's complicated, but actually we can calculate it. Okay. It turns out that this phase factor we are looking for is precisely given by the phase shift of the, the bug dual fields uh, uh, near the horizon. So, so for those of people uh, uh, familiar with the Bach, uh, uh, the behavior of say the Bach scalar field or yeah any Bach fields in the uh, uh, in the equation motion near the horizon is like a plane wave. So you have an infalling wave, we have an outgoing wave. So essentially, it's a superposition of two plane waves. And then and then for the normalizable wave function at infinity, okay, uh, and then the, the, when you go to the horizon. And then there's a specific sh phase shift between the ingoing plane wave and the outgoing uh, plane wave. It turns out that phase shift is precisely this phase shift uh, goes into the uh, 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 this US. Okay. Anyway, so, so now you can just construct this US explicitly. And now this is the flow pattern uh, uh, I showed before. Uh, and just you can, now I can just write down explicitly US and now I can just work it out. And then show the uh, show this kind of flow, and so this is like U kind of translation because near the horizon, uh, uh, it translates like U or uh, uh, U. But now if you do this, take n to infinity uh, to, to n to the future part of it, and then then we can actually is due to this entang to the, uh, yeah. So this is like entanglement wedge for the uh, for n, and uh, and then and then again you can work it out. Then you find this leads to another type of flow. Uh, 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 which you uh, uh, at the horizon you shift along the v direction. Okay, and again this corresponding to the uh, shift of the Cauchy slice. You can also superpose them. Okay, you can can, can see the compositions of such Kruska U and Kruska V type flows. And then presumably, if you do, yeah, presumably we can uh, generate you can generate infinite number of kind of flows. Uh, 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 time-like flows. Uh, now, don't they even have to be now at the horizon? But uh, isn't the uh, phase shift at the horizon unique? So, how does the information about the arbitrariness of the, you know, you mentioned that there is many choices that you have for choosing boundary regions and also for the U of S. Oh, oh, good, good, good. That's a very uh, uh, a good question. Uh, uh, it's only for this case, uh, uh, for the simplest case. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, for this case, only for this case, which due to this. And, and then you have a, a phase shift. And then, uh, um, and then the, the, if you have homo homogeneity uh, uh, in the spatial direction, and then that will lead to some more complicated phase shift. Yeah. yeah, so this is the simplest phase shift. It's just the standard, the scalar field story. Yeah. Yeah, also, yeah, here is similar. Good. And uh, so, um, yeah, so yeah, uh, yeah, I'm way out of time. Yeah, sorry. So, so maybe uh, 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 I can stop anytime. Uh, and if you want to hear generalization, I, said, uh, uh, I can also quickly mention. Uh, maybe if, if we, can, we can go for five more minutes. Okay, okay, good. Yeah, yeah, let me just quickly mention these generalizations. Okay, yeah, sorry, I just, uh, <laughs> when I talked, I forgot the time. Um, so we okay. have many questions. Yeah, yeah. So this emergent type three one is actually ubiquitous, and uh, and I mentioned the example of the uh, thermal field double for the, but you can also consider just a single CFT, okay, a single boundary CFT in the vacuum state, and then you can see the region R, 
okay? And then just the standard story, if you look at the full operator algebra in R, that's type three one. And, uh, but now there's, now there's a lot of emerging type three one. Is that if you look at the completion, yeah, uh, 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 of single trace operator algebra in this region R, and then, and then that gives you an emerging type three one uh, uh, structure in the large n limit. So now in the large n limit, actually there's two type three one structure. So why is just the standard one corresponding to any quantum field theory when you restrict your sub region? But now, but now the single trace operator gives you an emerging one. Okay. And then and then these two emerge, and then these two type three uh, one algebra actually leads to two different types of divergences. Uh, uh, when you look at holographic entanglement entropy. Anyway, so 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 why is ready to yeah uh, 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 let me not go into that uh, uh, anyway just tell you that uh, uh, this this story is actually very general you can apply it to sub regions etc and also you can turn it around so here I have constructed explicitly G for you uh, this U S for you you can also turn it around you say oh let's Imagine we just want to describe some kind of infolding flow, a uh, 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 evolution from one Cauchy slice to another Cauchy slice. What would be the necessary condition we need to impose to in order to have such flow? Okay, and so so there's a two minimal condition you have to impose. Okay, and say if you want to construct some unitary operator to uh, to achieve that, and then there's a two minimal conditions you have to this G have to satisfy. So first you have to involve both R and the L degrees freedom because if you want to go behind the horizon, you have to, then you causally connect it with both R and L and then you have to involve both R and left degrees freedom. And also, as I mentioned, in order to this to be a time, uh, 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 this have to be bounded from below. So using these two simple criteria, okay, these two simple conditions, then you can prove that uh, the sharp horizon cannot exist at the finite end. Okay, so so can only uh, exist at the infinite end, uh, essentially uh, as a consequence of this uh, emerging type three one structure. Okay, uh, 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 at the finite end, you just don't have it. And so this is actually very similar to the situation uh, uh, which I mentioned earlier for discretized the QFT, and there you, uh, uh, you cannot have a sharp net cone. Uh, 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 when you put a, 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 a discretization. Anyway, so, uh, so, uh, uh, so let me just uh, stop. Hong, okay. Just one small question, maybe a uh, clarification. When you say it's a causal weight, but the causal weight can depend on the uh, particular uh, state, right? I mean, this is, if you have, you're saying there's small fog excitation, you're assuming they don't change, they don't back react and change. Uh, the yeah, so. Weight. So here I just look at the sum of your double state. I'm looking at the, uh, I can look at more complicated. Yeah, indeed, you can look at more complicated states, but here it's just the vacuum. Uh, essentially is the, uh, 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 uh. yeah, you can look at the sum of your double state itself. And then you can also yeah. look at the excitations of the sum of your double state. Then you can have input, uh, many, many other states. Uh, and this is the statement for the, for the sum of your double state itself. I see, but you, it's important that these things are not back reacting for this story. So it is like order one excitation. And uh, yeah, yeah, uh, 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 yeah, if you, uh, uh, yeah, maybe plug in the power to my computer, otherwise uh, I'll run out of the power. Uh, when, yeah, one second. Um, it's strictly large and strong. Yeah, yeah, so, so, so it's possible. Uh, um, yeah, um, yeah, actually I'm running our power uh, uh, in a few minutes. Uh, one second, let me just try to- Okay, sure, sure. Plug in the power. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Um, good, good, okay, yeah. Yeah, I can just stop here, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, well, was there any question? Uh, 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 I forgot, yeah. Uh, no, 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 I think you answered it. Uh, let's take more questions then for, from others. Mm -hmm. No, I think Hong, uh, you were showing the last slide, the, the, the discussions uh, slide. Ah, the discussions, there are some other slide you probably didn't show, the discussion. 
Okay. The last slide. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I can quickly mention uh, 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 the discussions. Um, um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, actually, I have a few slides for the uh, discussions, but I can do it very quickly. So, firstly, you said, how do you see the black hole similarities? Okay. So, so, so you actually expect that when you do this flow, the flow should become singular uh, 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 with a finite flow parameter because eventually you hit the singularity. But in this large mass limit, actually, to see the similarity is actually not very easy. Anyway, so, so, so far, even though we expect you should see a singularity and we see some indication uh, uh, that this flow actually becomes singular for some finite value, but, but to do the sharp singularity, uh, uh, we don't have a completely clean story yet. Yeah. And uh, so, so, the, so now there's a slogan we can give to the singularity. He said, essentially, the singularity is the gravity way to tell us that this type three one structure is emergent. Okay, uh, it, it's something only intrinsic to large n. Okay, it's something intrinsic to large n. Uh, um, yeah. Then, then also there's something uh, uh, we can say about the Bach UV divergences. Yeah, because this in the Rindler case, what distinguishes this discrete and the continuum limit is UV divergences. So this UV divergence is separate this type one with type three one structure. And now this emerging type three one structure on the gravity side, and then implies that the, that, that the various quantities on the gravity side should be divergent. And then those divergence have to do with not gen, okay? Not have to be with, with alpha prime not to do with the strong coupling. So normally we believe on the, normally what we believe in string theory is that you can, the string theory calculate observable should be finite genus by genus. Okay, because the, for example, if you look at scattering amplitude, the genus by genus is UV finite. But now this type one, type three one structure implies there should be some kind of bulk divergences. And those bulk divergences has only to do with Najian structure. Even if you consider the full string theory, but if you do perturbative in G string, means you are doing one of any expansion, you still should have that divergence. Okay. So, so that means actually there are new kind of UV divergence in, uh, 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 in string theory for certain disentanglement related observables. Uh, uh, which have to be canceled between different genuses, okay? And so, uh, uh, so I think this may have some interesting implications for our understanding of string theory. Uh, anyway, so, so also, yeah, uh, let me just quickly sh show some future directions, say single-sided black holes and emergent symmetries. Yeah, there, uh, there are also symmetries can be emergent uh, along with this, uh, um, uh, type three one structure, and then uh, then also maybe in other contexts. Okay, yeah, yeah, we'll stop here. Yeah. Uh, Thanks. Can you, you say a bit? Can you please say a bit more about the different types of three one uh, divergences in the CFT subregion R in the slide? Oh, okay, okay. You mean here? Yes. Okay. So, so here we have two three one algebra. So let's look at first this three one algebra. So this three one algebra just means it's the standard story that the the entanglement entropy associated with this region should be divergent in the continuum limit. And and that divergence is well known. That just corresponding to the RT surfaces when you approach to the boundary the part of the area of the RT surface. Yeah, so if you look at the region R in the boundary and this is RT surface in the park. And uh, so, so, so this type three one structure, the reflection in the park corresponding to the area of the RT surface go to infinity near the boundary. 
So this is, is the reflection of that type one three one structure. So now this emerging type three one structure is reflected in that when you calculate the say the entangle uh, the bulk entanglement entropy. Uh, so so the entangled entropy for this R region contains two pieces. You have RT surfaces, but also contain the uh, entangled entropy uh, in the in the in the entanglement wedge. And now the entanglement wedge. When you calculate the entropy of the entanglement wedge, then there are divergences all over the RT surface, okay? And that divergences is a reflection of this emergent type 3 one structure. Okay. okay. I, yeah. yeah. Thanks. Uh, in all of this analysis, uh, do you only care whether the algebra is 3 1 or you want to know more of what kind of 3 1 algebras are these? Um, yeah, I think a general property of 3 1 would be enough. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, are your 3 1 algebras like what are known as Araki Woods algebras? Sorry? So are the three one algebras that you finally encounter are what are known as Araki Woods factors or they are known as hyperfinite? Like they um, generate out of matrices. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, 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 I think they're not hyperfinite, but I cannot, but I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, I'm not sure. This question, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know the answer to your question. Yeah, uh, 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 for this question. Uh, but I suspect it's not hyperfinite, uh, but but I don't know for sure. Yeah. Yeah, because it's very interesting if it is not hyperfinite. <laughs> because usually they turn out to be hyperfinite. Yeah. Yeah. The hyper. Yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. If it's hyperfinite, then then it's actually pretty. Then the story is simpler because of the, the there's a unique hyperfinite one. Uh, um, yeah, but I don't know how to connect this to the hyperfinite. So, uh, uh, so the answer is I don't know. Uh, uh, be, yeah, because I don't know how to connect this to the uh, 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 that hyperfinite construction. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Hong, um, I mean, it's a fantastic talk. Uh, thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and I, so a naive question. Um, so you say that the single trace um, algebras under time evolution, uh, they uh, do not remain single trace. So mm -hmm. basically, um, this is probably a very naive question because I don't know the subject very well of the these algebras. Uh, so they um, evolve into multi-trace uh, operators. Is that uh, what you have in mind? No, no, it's not only the multiple trace operator. It's actually uh, so so you can have yeah the the multiple trace operator if it's finite multiple yeah if you say it's say double trace or triple trace or or any finite number of traces they're all in this single trace operator algebra. Yeah, right? that's what I that's what I have. So you can multiply them, but they, yeah. but when you evolve, but they evolve with with a finite time. Then that will take you into an operator which is independent. Uh, 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 then that actually go beyond the. Uh, 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 essentially, it's a uh, 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 yeah. Become independent. Uh, become uh, independent. And uh, an RGN that end dependent. Yeah. Oh, you see, you see. Uh, uh, the Hamiltonian operator, yeah. If you think this way, uh, mm. yeah. Let's look at the evolution. Uh, just Heisenberg evolution, right? You take a single trace operator and you do a Heisenberg evolution. Right. The so Heisenberg evolution is expansion I H T. Okay. Yes. But remember the Hamiltonian. Yes. The, the Hamiltonian when you uh, which govern the evolution, half of the structure is n times trace. This m factor there. So if you evolve using such an exponential, that will take you 
to your operator, which is no longer any finite product of a single trace operator. Yeah, so that M factor is the key in the definition of the Hamiltonian. I mean, so if I um, if I think of Young Mills theory, so essentially it is E square minus B square, right? I mean, uh, no, no, it's N times E square minus B square. Oh, I see. That's I see. That's what you mean. It's uh, the the one over G square factor that becomes like N uh, E square minus. Risk. Yeah, yeah, because because the Hamiltonian is say the, say you write trace f square etc. It's actually n times trace and uh, uh, f square uh, uh, plus something else. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Yeah, that m factor is key. You have to include that m factor. Okay. Thank you. So uh, I have a short. Oh, sorry. Is there Gautam? You want to say more? Yeah, no, no. Go ahead. I um, yeah, go ahead. I, I have one no, one thing more, but I'll uh, ask later. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so anyway, by mine is kind of short thing. Going back to this, uh, so you your dual your statement is uh, your hypothesis of this duality between the causal wedge and this and the boundary subalgebra. So this. Uh, this thing for this to work, I think it it is also important that the horizon indeed becomes fuzzy, because uh, as I said, uh, if you're if you consider ex excitations, the causal wave changes, and uh, so maybe you don't want that to happen. So you don't want this duality to be strict, uh, I guess. And uh, this is and so it, it becomes compatible if your if your horizon is fuzzy by an amount order one. Am I understanding correctly? Uh, yeah. I I don't fully, uh, we haven't really looked too much on the, uh, 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 what happens if we have small excitation, et cetera. Uh, that will, may, may have some effect of shift your horizon a little bit, uh, uh, but that shift should be somewhat infinitesimal from the Bach point of view. And if you have uh, only all the Y excitations, and yeah, in the sense that the shift is the, uh, is, Say the Planck scale, uh, some multiple Planck scale. It, it's a very small shift, mm. and uh, so I would think you still have a sharp horizon. Uh, but but when you have when you consider such kind of small distances, then things become tricky. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure they're uh, they're yeah yeah. Just say uh, just say uh, some some care needs to be carefully some care needs to be given to formulate precise questions. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe that kind of excitations that uh, you are going to cons consider then should be have a cutoff uh, based on the fact that you should not shift your horizon to bit what because otherwise your uh, I, I, the statement of duality should work on a subspace like this. And this. Yeah, I think shift horizon is okay. Yeah, yeah, just say uh, uh, just say uh, 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 when, once you do that the things become more complicated. You just have to be yeah many mm -hmm. questions have to be uh, uh, have to be thought over. So what I describe is just the simplest case. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, one uh, quick question. So, will this prove? Uh, uh, I mean, kind of uh, intuitively, will go through uh, if uh, the like the entanglement wedge. If I have some complicated bulk geometry where the entanglement wedge is not the causal wedge. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, that's. Yeah, that story is, 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 is certainly, uh, I think the general story should go through, just the details will be much more complicated, yeah. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm like, because probably I'm asking uh, this question is because uh, this is uh, the existence of this parameter S, it kind of uh, evolves everything very causally uh, from, the outside of the horizon region to inside. And, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Just this is the story in the in the simplest case. So mm -hmm. once we look at the more complicated story subregion or all these thing, and the complications will arise, uh, will arise. But I think that this kind of general general emerging type three one should be very robust because because single trace over the edge is everywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, yeah, I just, then they, 
yeah, uh, yeah, the story just gets more complicated, but but all those are interesting questions. Yeah, just uh, yeah, just we haven't really thought about those issues. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Maybe if, if it's not too late, let me ask Hong once more. Uh, this is just to beat your brains about C equal to one matrix uh, model. Uh -huh. So, you know, so there uh, we know that there is a, um, you know, the uh, this collective variable uh, description of the C equal to one matrix model for which, uh, you know, it's the, the density of eigenvalues description. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know that that is incomplete in, um, uh, in, in, in some ways. Um, and uh, the, the, the singlet sector of that matrix model is more appropriately um, described by uh, the, this fermion theory. Mm -hmm. So now, um, so you know, the, um, I was just, so, so first of all, this <clears throat> um, finite N appears as the finite depth of a, so these are non-relativistic fermions. So finite N appears as a finite depth of the Fermi C, uh, mm -hmm. which describes the ground state of the system. Um, so I think, uh, and of course the, um, you know, the, these things play a, a role, important role in the bulk understanding of the C equal to one matrix model. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> So, and uh, you know, N itself is a is a um, sort of source of non-compactness. Um, besides, so where well, the, the you know the space is created by uh, the eigenvalue direction, which comes from uh, you know the densities, and the density description itself depends on N, and so on. Yeah. So, uh, non-compactness in that context is closely associated with uh, uh, infinite n. Right, right, right. Um, so you have, uh, you know, some indication in your, uh, in your algebraic description also of that, that the um, one doesn't only uh, bother about non-compactness, uh, you know, the epsilon going to zero, I mean, the cutoff going to zero limit, Mm -hmm. in the context of uh, you know the von neumann 1 versus von neumann uh, 3 1 etc but right. even in going to infinity plays a similar um, role mm -hmm. which you mentioned in the in your uh, you know discussion of the singularity right right so is there some algebraic uh, okay so this is a, a, a i could have asked it in a much shorter way is there some algebraic uh, description of this aspect also? I mean, like you could have uh, type three one, but a distinction between finite n versus infinite n, or is it the same story that uh, you know three one is enough to describe large n and non-compact? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's a very interesting question. I think that uh, indeed uh, that might be a very Simple context, which uh, um, we we can try to understand these kind of questions better. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, uh, uh, right now I cannot really say I know what should be the answer, but uh, 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 but indeed I think the um, yeah I think it's it's interesting to think one can formulate similar questions in that context. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, we, uh, so with some students of mine, I have been looking at the entanglement structure um, of, uh, let us say, uh, multiple intervals, uh, which um, uh, appear from the fermionic theory itself. And it shows a difference from what you would have expected in the bulk. Mm -hmm. There are some mm -hmm. subtle differences. I see. And um, so we are trying to interpret those differences at the moment, um, mm -hmm. whether they're, 
in, uh, interesting or not, that is not clear. But uh, your uh, algebraic description seems to point to the fact that you know one should probably look at the algebraic algebra of this Fermion theory versus algebra of the you know the effective bosonic theory of uh, right right yeah that's right yeah yeah that's one way you may see some clue yeah that's right yeah I see yeah oh thanks so if I if I um, you know, have some more questions on that. Maybe I'll ask you uh, on email. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it is quite late here now. <laughs> so I'm also late for Hong. So maybe we should close <laughs> right away. And so okay. thanks, Hong, for this amazing, wonderful talk. And uh, hope to see you in India and in Chennai at some point then. <laughs> and okay. visit us. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so good night to you and uh, have a good day, rest of uh, the people here. Okay, so, okay, thanks. Bye. Yeah, yeah bye. Yeah. Mm -hmm.